unfortunately, I couldn't edit them during lunch. So my notation will be slightly different than his. Okay, so let me start by just uh, explaining the notation. So for me, this G naught will be connected real semi simple E group with finite center, and K naught is a maximal compact subgroup of G naught, and K naught will be a maximal torus in K naught. by the algebras of G0, K0, and E0. And I will assume that G0 and K0 have equal rank. And this means, as was clear from Dobrin's lecture, that T0 uh, is the compact Cartan subject of G0. And under these conditions on the group G0, uh, I mean, this is why I need this condition. Uh, 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 in, under these conditions, the group G0 has this great series, which appear again in Belfort's lectures very explicitly in the case of SO, uh, SU11. Uh, one, one. So then I will denote by B a Borel subalgebra containing this Lie algebra P of P naught, and N is its an important radical of this Borel. And uh, if I have a, an irreducible Harish Chandra module for G naught, then they were introduced and described by both. Then I can, for that n, I can compute the responding Lie algebra homology, and I get so this uh, <clears throat> in each degree from zero to the dimension of n, I get a uh, vector space on which T naught acts. So this is a representation of T naught, and uh, those representations of finite dimension. Oh, I mean, this requires a proof, of course, and uh, the proof uh, will come out in a few minutes from geometric interpretation, although it can, in fact, can be also proved algebraic. So, if R is the root system of G and T, and then the roots, of course, are in the linear dual T star T. And let R plus be the set of positive roots uh, such that the corresponding subspaces span N. And uh, let me denote by rho the half sum of roots in our R plus. And also as in both of its lectures, I will denote by W the value of that root system. Then, by a result of Castleman and Osborne, we can actually dis uh, describe the N homology of V more precisely. So, it is a sum of uh, subspaces which transform under the action of the group T0 in such a way that the differential of that action is given by the linear form W lambda plus rho. So basically to calculate an homology of this Hirschchandra module, we just have to know the dimension of this eigenspace on the right. What is lambda? Is that the infinitesimal character? Uh, lambda 
is the infinitesimal character. Yes, that's true. Because our module is irreducible, so it has the infinitesimal the sum is over driver by the flex P or no? No, 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 I I'm I'm not I'm not say this, this is just a very naive statement. These are the only traits which can happen in an homology. I'm not this is what Kasselman Osmond theorem says that only these traits can appear. But this this is not constant still. This is so general. No 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 it's just completely general. The answer to the question. Yeah. I mean, this is just a very, very simple fact from homology to homology. So, I mean, the first line is related to uh, Greg's comment. If G0 is compact and V is finally natural representation, then the precise result is the uh, famous result constant in uh, if uh, V is a discrete series representation then this is a result of Wilfred's in his paper of L2 cohomology then Williams uh, pointed out I mean did, uh, he, he figured out that Schmitt's argument still works for so-called non-degenerate discrete series, it will become clear later what this actually means. And then for some class of ants, Mirkovich calculated his anhomologies, and Zorgel uh, published a paper with a proof of the general result, but by his own admission that his published proof was incorrect and, and his paper I find extremely confusing. So I think it's important to say it's not just the proof that is incorrect, also the statement is uh, almost unintelligible. Yes, yes. The I mean, the result is almost unintelligible. Yeah, I mean, it says. Uh, so, so what uh, I'm going to discuss today is a part of uh, this project to understand the, the, all these uh, results from some coherent point of view. And this is a, a, a joint project with Wilfred, and it has two parts. One is algebraic and elementary and the, the one I will talk about today is geometric and it fits in the program of this conference so I think so I will talk only about geometric uh, uh, view of this and it's not clear that uh, for this last question so the case of uh, arbitrary elements of discrete series, this is the right way to look at, the, at this approach. I mean, uh, um, maybe it's better to look at it algebraically, but at least uh, the history of, of the problem and the history of the results, I think, when, uh, will be very clear when you see this geometric Approach and I think at least people with uh, light B modules, I think at the end will be able to, uh, in the middle of the night, to reconstruct the proof and the result easily. So the, I learned about the problem from Wilfred, who actually, as I understand, the question was raised by uh, Phil Griffiths. And uh, the result is used by people who study Shimura varieties. This is a different story. I, I just want to discuss this as an illustration of application of geometric methods in uh, solving a problem in representation theory. 
So the first thing I have to uh, discuss briefly, and I hope I can help Wilfred with this, with this is the D modules and representation, the connection of D modules and representations, what he will have to talk about at some point. So uh, I'll denote by U of G the enveloping algebra of G. Z of J is the center of U of G, Wilfred discussed today. And uh, uh, X will be the flag variety of G. So this is the variety of all, all Borel subalgebras of G. And I consider it as an algebraic variety with the risky topology. So I will be doing all of this in algebraic category. And this is very important for further. So X is a smooth projective variety, and for any X in X, I will denote by B of X the corresponding, I mean B, X is a Borel subalgebra, but to make notation reasonable, I will denote by B of X the corresponding Borel subalgebra in G. And uh, let B be the vector of subangle uh, of the trivial bundle over X, uh, set, uh, with fibers consisting of uh, uh, corresponding uh, Borels. And then for each Borel, I can denote by N of X, the commutator of B of X with itself. And uh, N is the vector sum bundle of this bundle of Borels, such that fibers over X uh, are uh, just the uh, corresponding n of x. Then an elementary fact is that this vector bundle uh, b mod n is trivial. So therefore, it's of the uh, form x cross h. And we call it h an abstract Artan uh, algebra of g. And, uh, because, and the reason for this is that if I uh, look at an arbitrary Cartan subalgebra, it sits in a bunch of Borels, but if I fix a Borel, then I'm fixing a point in X, and then I have a map from the Cartan in the Borel, and in this Borel, I have a projection on the quotient of B mod N, and I hit uh, a point in, in this H. So basically, for any Cartan, if we pick a Borel which contains it, it gives us an isomorphism between this Cartan and this abstract Cartan. So over each X, uh, we get this isomorphism of uh, a concrete Cartan with this abstract one, which is important when we want to transfer data from H to the various Cartans. It's important in calculations. Yeah, so, so this is what I was just discussing a moment ago, that if I pick an X, and I look at this Cartan sitting inside B, B of X, then we have a natural isomorphism of C with H, and the dual uh, map from H star into C star is called specialization. And of course, as uh, we have seen, okay, uh, okay, then maybe I should postpone this comment till the next slide, uh, so, so first of all, we can use this to transfer roots from these cartons to the abstract carton, and this gives us a reduced root system sigma in H star, which is the specialization that corresponds to the root system of the pair GC. And we can pick a set of positive roots, 
sigma plus and sigma such that the span of root subspace is for the corresponding positive root systems uh, spans n of x. I'm sorry again that I am sure that Wilfred will use the opposite choice of the positive roots, but in the calculations I will uh, be doing later, I, if I try again quickly to change all the uh, choices of positive roots with the opposite positive roots, I would probably uh, lose a lot of minuses and make all formulas incorrect. So anyway, this pair, sigma and sigma plus, is independent of, independent of choice of x, and it calls sigma the abstractor of the system of G, and we can identify the wild group W, which we had before, with this abstract wild group. Okay, so this was just, again, notation, but then, again, we get to this issue of Parmesan-Chakra homomorphism, that there is a natural uh, homomorphism of the center of the interlocking algebra of G with a symmetric algebra uh, of H, and it, it establishes an isomorphism of Z of G with uh, wild group invariance in a symmetric algebra of H. This is exactly what was discussed by Wilfred at the end of his talk. And of course, we can view the symmetric algebra of H as an invariant polynomial, but he has polynomials on H star, Therefore, the wild group invariance in S of H, we can identify the W invariant polynomials of H star. So, so if I pick an orbit of the wild group in H star, then uh, I can look at the ideal in the center of the Z of G, which corresponds to all invariant polynomial vanishing on the order of theta, and this gives us the parametrization of the space of maximal ideals in the center, and then we put that u theta is the quotient of the endorphic algebra of G by the ideal generated by the curve uh, by this ideal i theta in the center. And we denote by m u theta the uh, category of all u theta modules. So, so this is basically in the category of modules over enveloping algebra with the uh, infinitesimal character corresponding to this orbit theta. So now, now we, get, we get really to geometry. So Bailison and Bernstein, in their theory of localization of modules over enveloping algebras, what they did, they constructed a family, the lambda, of twisted sheaves of differential operators. So if I have a smooth algebraic variety, I can define a sheaf of differential operators on it, and the twisted sheaf of differential operators is a sheaf of algebras on X, which locally looks like differential operators, but not necessarily globally. So, I will give you some examples in a moment. So they constructed such a family of twisted sheaves on X with the natural homomorphism of the analogic algebra into global twisted differential operators, which induce isomorphisms 
compute theta with these global differential operators. So basically, they um, constructed sheaves of algebras on X such that global sections of these sheaves of algebras are our algebras mu theta. And uh, if you and of course you can do this for any lambda from that particular orbit theta of the value of so, so now if you ever studied uh, Sarah's paper on coherent algebraic uh, modules, then you immediately get the uh, idea how to proceed. We can look at the category of modules or she can modules or sheets D lambda and uh, we assume that they are quasi-coherent for I mean this is the reason why we need to work in an algebraic category and we can define two functors we can define the functor of global sections from M D lambda and we land in M D theta and we can define also a functor going in the opposite direction called the localization functor, which is given just as a tensor product of V and D lambda all over U theta. And uh, those two functors, from completely elementary reasons, uh, uh, an adjoint pair of functors and under certain conditions they define an equivalent subcategories and let me recall uh, that result so if I look at the dual system of roots of sigma then uh, for a dual loop root alpha and lambda in H, we say that lambda in H star is anti-dominant if alpha check on lambda is not uh, a positive integer for any positive root alpha. And of course we say that lambda in H star is regular if, if alpha check lambda is different from zero for any alpha in C. And then the equivalence of categories theorem is that if lambda is in H, uh, in H star is anti-dominant and regular, then these two functors I described on the previous slides are uh, quasi-inverse equivalences of categories. And uh, this is in some sense, the uh, last generalization of Borel Bale theorem, because in the case of Borel Bale, uh, if you look at this, you will have here, say, finite dimensional representations, and here you will have corresponding line models. And the, the, the whole point of this equivalence of categories is that you can look at the problem say on the representation theory side and by the equivalence of categories you can move it in the problem in the cat in category of localized objects these are uh, sheaves of modules over the specific sheaf of differential operators d lambda and there you can use the d module theory to analyze the problem and solve it and then you go back by the functor global sections and you reinterpret the result. And this is basically what I am going to do in our calculation of an homology. So let me say a few words about an homology in this setting. First of all, there is an elementary formula from 
which follows from the definitions that if I look at localization, which is certain D margin, I can calculate its geometric fiber at the point. So I have some D lambda module and Px of V is O x. So this is structure sheaf of x. It's stock at the point x. Tensor. Uh, no, I, I'm sorry. I this will be over this. So I look at O x x mod maximal ideal of okay the x the x. So this is isomorphic to C tensor over stock with the stock of uh, this D module fat. So this is the uh, left side of, of our formula that we calculate geometric fiber on localization and if you write down what this thing is and uh, use the formula for localization, you easily uh, can show that this is zero and homology. So this is just uh, uh, V mod N of X V weight lambda plus rho, this weight subspace of this. For any x in x. So now I want to reinterpret this formula and give you its generalization. So let me denote by V the Borel sub, uh, subgroup of int of G corresponding to, uh, to B from, and this, this B is, is the B from the beginning of my talk. So this is one of the Borel's containing this torus B. And then we know that, so this fixed Borel uh, acts on a flat variety and the orbits of Ruha cells, and they're parameterized by the wild group, and I will denote by CW uh, the Ruha cell attached to W in W. I will denote by L the length function of W, and Again, one elementary fact is the dimension of the Bruja cell is given by the length function applied to the element of the bile group uh, in W. And then I will denote that IW, the inclusion of CWX, and I will also need this map pi W which uh, is a projection of Bruja cell to the point. Then I can reinterpret the above formula in a, in a stupid way because I take my localization and uh, I look at the Bruja cell corresponding to one, so this is just a point cell, and I take the D module uh, inverse image factor and apply to this and this D module inverse image factor in the case of uh, inclusion of the point uh, corresponding to B to the flag variety is just calculating geometric fiber. So the formula at the bottom is just the simple rewrite of the formula in the top. And this formula can be generalized in the following way. So I want to have the formula for all components of N homology which appears in my original problem. And uh, what do I do? Now I have my flag variety x. On it, I have this D module D 
Bruna's cell given by W. Of course, to, to make this work, I have to use fancy homological algebra because all these factors are not exact. I have to work in the right categories. Excuse me, just a comment. Uh, you're not using so far the genes that are shown in proof. 
principle allows you to calculate an homology, it's not in general a very useful formula because I mean, in general, these uh, restrictions, so these inverse images and direct images of D modules, it's hard to calculate. But in some examples, this can be done quite easily. So let me start with the first example, which is not much, but it will tell us that we are on the right track. So let me look at the case of an F is a finite dimensional representation with all the straight lambda. Then it has infinitesimal character, chi lambda minus rho because of the rho shift and this, its localization at lambda minus rho is the line bundle or sheaf of sections of a line model called lambda. So this is again a form of Borel layout because global sections of all lambda will give us back F by the equivalence of categories. Now if I take this whole lambda and I restrict it to Bruja cell, <laughs> I mean then then I will get just a structure sheet on the Bruja cell. This is uh, if you think about this, it would be kind of completely obvious that this is the result in degree zero and nothing in the other degrees. And uh, then when I push it to a point, I'm basically calculating algebraic the run of this uh, OCW on a Bruja cell because of the definition of direct image of D modules shifted to the left by the length of element W and so I get this formula over here when I put all of this together I get the following formula for this component of N homology of F and this is uh, just the uh, Costan's theorem, I get C if P is equal to the length of, length of W and I get zero otherwise. Okay, so now I want to look at slightly uh, in, a, in a harder problem and I, I want to look at uh, uh, Wilfred's uh, result of discrete series. So in this case, as in his talk, I have K, which is complexification of K0, <laughs> and it acts on X with finite and many orbits, and uh, the, the main point is important for this is that discrete series representations are attached to closed orbits of K and X in a particular way. So if I take any closed orbit of K, then on this closed orbit, which is just a flag variety of K, uh, we get an equivariant connection which corresponds to the character lambda plus rho and uh, then I take this connection I take its direct image with respect <coughs> to the inclusion of closed orbit into X and I get the standard module attached to the closed orbit corresponding to this connection tau I'm sure that Wilfred will uh, discuss this in detail in his lectures describing the classification of irreducible Harichandra modules. This is a very special case of this. The standard <coughs> module in this case is irreducible, so, so 
So the, the problem of uh, unique irreducible sum is is uh, is non-existent in this case because this is just this guy. So these are the standard Hirschfeld sheaves attached to these closed orbits, and the, the the theorem is that vocalizations of discrete series. The infinitesimal carrier pi lambda are uh, exactly these standard Hirschfeld machines. So if I take a point in the orbit Q, then I can look at the intersection of the corresponding Borel with K, and this is a Borel sum of <coughs> the integral of K. Therefore, this map from X in B of X intersected with K is an isomorphism of the closed orbit with a flag variety XK of K. So, if I pick the closed orbit, it's naturally isomorphic to a flag variety of the complexified maximum compact. And I will denote by B of K the subgroup of B corresponding to this world sub -object. So we call the root compact if the root subspace corresponding to it is in our Lie algebra K and compact roots form a root subspace the system of the root system R and we know by WK the corresponding Y group of K, uh, which is generated by uh, compact reflections, but then by L of K is the length function of WK. And uh, again, for any element of WK, we have a corresponding group as cell, which is the <laughs> orbit of K in X of K corresponding to this W. And then, of course, these Bruja cells in flag variety of F of K uh, give us the corresponding uh, uh, stratification by orbits of uh, uh, BK orbits of the orbit Q uh, and the the above isomorphism. <clears throat> On the other hand, if I pick uh, W in the big vial group and pick <coughs> this orbit, uh, uh, closed orbit of K in intersected with the uh, big Bruja cell of this W, then the intersection <coughs> is VK invariant, therefore it's either empty or the union of, of these uh, VK orbits in, in, uh, in Q. And then there is this very simple uh, geometric lemma which explains how does this in, um, intersection looks like. So there exists the unique element of the Y group such that the intersection V such that the intersection of this closed orbit with C of V is um, a point in, in, the, in Q and any other intersection comes from Bruja cells C WV when W is in WK with Q. And uh, <clears throat> this gives us the precise description of this uh, intersection. So if we remember what our formula says, we have this D module, in this case, we have some Q, which is a closed or 
orbit of k and then we take some connection line and we push it forward by the module direct image and now we intersect it with the Bruja cell and we see which Bruja cells intersect this non-trivial and uh, in this case the intersection is something very simple and there is a, a base change result in theory of the module so it essentially tells us that if I take a direct image and restrict it under certain conditions up to certain shift this commutes with the operation in the other way so we can first restrict this connection to this intersection and then uh, take direct image anyway if you use base change and the previous result then you get exactly the theorem of Schmidt from his paper with slightly different description of these P's. Uh, so, n homology pieces are non zero only if uh, for U's which are in, the, in the, this call set of the element P. Otherwise, they uh, uh, <coughs> Otherwise, the intersection is empty and we get nothing. And for any W uh, in WK, if we calculate this, then we get exactly this result. Let me point out that, so this is the uh, difference of dimensional flag varieties, and here uh, what I have is uh, the dimension of the big cell which intersect and this is the dimension of the of the small cell the cell in a compact uh, <coughs> in a closed orbit Q and then there is another copy of this so there is a co-dimension of the this big group has cell and the intersection which is entering and also the dimension of the small one. If, if you look at the formulas in Lofrit's uh, paper and uh, do some simple uh, counting, you see that it's equivalent to this. And also, I mean, if you want an easy test, you can assume that the group is is compact. Then, uh, of course, Wilfred's result specializes to to this uh, constants, and uh, you can see this immediately from this formula because these pieces cancel out. B is equal to one. L is equal to L of k, and this is exactly. Constants uh, for one. Okay, so now to proceed, we want to understand. Right? <coughs> we want to understand the, uh, how these cohomology classes from where they come. And uh, now we get to Greg's favorite topics from a long, long time ago. And this is Strauber's resolution. And I learned about this from Greg in <coughs> 82. Yes. You want to know the exact No. So, so basically, let me try to be uh, uh, kind of I'm, I'm short on time. So basically, what, what's going on? We have this close orbit. We have uh, a Q which has a stratification by this uh, <coughs> orbit of small Borel, Borel of K, BK. And uh, this stratification is such that we can uh, first on <clears throat> uh, do, do the following thing. I mean, we can take O on one of these small Bruja 
ourselves in Q and we can take their direct image to full, full flag variety. This is this JW lambda. So this is standard module attached to this intersection. And uh, okay, we denote with WKQ the subset of WK consisted of elements of the length Q with respect to the length function of this uh, WK. And then there is so called Cousin resolution of the D module corresponding to discrete series, which is given by this. JW lambdas and uh, uh, W's go over all elements in WK where the length is dimension of Q minus P. And the uh, differentials uh, basically are given explicitly, they are basically just taking the residues along some Bruja cells of co-dimension uh, one in the closure of the DPM Bruja cell. And this uh, resolution gives the <coughs> of IQ tau is gives us a resolution of our in our case that uh, one that is say antidominant the global sections of this resolution are isomorphic uh, with uh, this D of V with, with a basically complex uh, corresponding uh, to our discrete series representation. So therefore we get a resolution of this discrete series representation um, by uh, global sections of the D modules and this, this is by definition Trauber's resolution of discrete series V. I mean, just a side comment that my former student, Juan Mojicic, uh, actually proved that the Trauber resolution is the same as Air Enreitler Garajan resolution of discrete series, what was the conjecture? of Trauber or yours, I don't know. So that definitely it's in Greg's stall. Now, because the modules in Trauber's resolution also look very simple, uh, simple with respect to this uh, geometric picture, we can calculate from our formula their homology. And then homology appears only in one degree, depending on this W, and uh, we, uh, we see that what uh, uh, now it appears in degree, which is dimension of X minus the co-dimension of this intersection whole thing. So they all appear in the in the in the degree which is uh, controlled by co-dimensional. So now, if I want to find the n homology of V, I can uh, calculate. It by looking at the hyper cohomology of the Trauber resolution of this complex D. If lambda is regular, then all these weights 
in uh, a peer ring in a and the homology of the elements in the triangle resolution are different. Therefore, if I look at E1 term of hypercohomology spectral sequence of the uh, dot, or, uh, then this spectral sequence collapses because it contains for each rate only one term. And this immediately implies Schmidt's theorem and also shows that each homology class in Schmidt's theorem corresponds exactly to one module in Trauber resolution. Okay. Let, yeah, let me just go back to this. If I can make another uh, comment that if I look at the corresponding situation for uh, Costan's theorem, then Trauber resolution is nothing else than VGG resolution. And this, what we get from this, that each, uh, I mean, this is an unknown fact, that each cohomology class in N homology of finite dimensional representation comes from a corresponding term in VGG resolution. Okay, so, so this basically explains Wilfrid's theorem in terms of geometry, but now uh, let me assume that lambda is uh, still antagonist but singular. Then still the functor gamma is exact, and therefore Trauber resolution is still a resolution of this limits of discrete series B. And uh, since the analogies of each sum in uh, Trauber resolution are this module JW lambda, then uh, we can uh, calculate what happens when lambda, so when you go from regular lambda to singular lambda using tensoring technique. And so if you do this, we get a spectral sequence of tensoring, and because homology is concentrated only in one degree, from that we get again that for after tensoring only again we have only one contribution, one dimensional contribution, one degree. So the same formula which holds in regular case for n homology holds in singular case for any element in Trauber resolution. So now, is, if one is WK regular, then this means, remember, the elements in Trauber resolution are parameterized by the uh, WK uh, coset. So, if, if lambda is WK regular, all the ways appearing in the calculation of n homology are different. So the same argument as before will apply and will give us the formula for n homology and the limits of this great series. And uh, this means that Schmidt's uh, result will hold also in, in that case, and this was exactly what Williams claimed. So, so, so the proof of this is exactly the same uh, because we just use the fact that the only thing which matters is a regularity with respect to WK. If WK is, the lambda is not WK, regular, the differentials can be non-trivial and the complex uh, and the situation is murkier, but 
still we have a, a filtration of our complex with respect to this uh, co-dimension, this difference. And uh, if you look at these formulas, you will see that uh, actually, um, if co-dimension is constant for all the orbits appearing in intersection, then uh, the, the, spe the spectral sequence for cohomology with the, the will collapse and in E term. So, I mean, I think the, the, the same statement holds in general, it collapses in E2 term, and there are, uh, the cohomology of the complex is sum of cohomologies of the complexes which uh, correspond to each uh, possible uh, co-dimension which appears in this calculation. So it's, uh, I mean, this can be made precise, but that's why I'm sorry, I'm already the time. So, so, so let me uh, show you the just very brief discussion of the first non-trivial example of this calculation for this. So this is in the case of SU21 when K is GL2C and in this case you have three families of discrete series homomorphic, anti-homomorphic and non-homomorphic. Uh, for homomorphic and anti-homomorphic by the result of Mirkovic this uh, and the Say the case I care about is one that equals zero, where <coughs> uh, Schmidt's result, as I just proved, it doesn't apply. Uh, uh, but so if lambda is equal to zero, Mirkovich's result, you get that you get n uh, nothing in a, in a homology. I mean, I one can calculate this uh, explicitly using the formula say described, but I don't want to do this. So the, the only uh, interesting uh, situation is this non-homomorphic uh, case for lambda equals to zero. In this case, actually, the, the limit of discrete series representation is a spherical principal series representation to and uh, the flag variety xk, of course, is a Riemann sphere, and uh, so q comes from a Riemann sphere, this is a point, and this is c. And if we write down the Trauer resolution, we get that our discrete series uh, is the kernel of the surjective morphism of this j to the other j. Our formulas tell us homology of these j modules and from the long exact sequence of homology, we find the homology of this limits of discrete series representation and uh, the shocking thing is that this anhomology is non-zero, as you can see, and this result was discovered by Pariol by brutal computation. <clears throat> I mean, he just wrote down this, this uh, spherical principle series representation and the action of the standard complex and uh, the long calculation you get this result. Okay, I'm sorry for going over time, and I'll stop here. Thank you very much for this very interesting talk. Anybody for us open for comments, questions? So what about the uh, moment
standard module attached to, to close organs. Okay, I mean, I didn't think about this, but you can probably say something. But in general, if you take a non-closed organ, then the intersection will be a mess. And well, I mean, I look at some low-dimensional examples, and, and you, you can do some calculations by, by the they become extremely complicated. So, I mean, th this formula is useful just in some accidental cases where uh, when the intersection is uh, simple and you can uh, and you can uh, uh, do some calculation. So well, there's also a different answer to the question here. Maybe uh, when you prove a result not necessarily only because you can prove it, but also because it's relevant for something. And in the equal rank case, this has to do with automotive forms. Mm -hmm. That's why it's interesting. And of course, I mean, when you have uh, multiple rank, let's say, closed orbits, then yes, technically it becomes uh, trickier, but there's no connection to automotive forms. So it's also much less uh, reason to actually do that. Well, I, I have something in mind that's why I'm asking. Sure. But yeah, it's a no, I, I, I think this is because my reason of looking at this, I, I couldn't understand. I mean, I could understand technically. I mean, Wilfred's argument is, is very uh, uh, clear and simple, but I, I just couldn't understand philosophically why the, the Homology class is uh, parameterized by the coset of the small wild mm -hmm. in the UK. And uh, I, I think from this argument, this, this becomes completely. No, this is this uh, problem. Yeah, but uh, this is just, just the fact that the only thing which matters are intersections with this uh, uh, closed orbit, which are just parameterized by. I mean, Trauber is a nice way to see geometrically what the classes, particular classes are, but I'm talking an even uh, more trivial level. That's so, so what, what are these intersections? So, so this is <coughs> that these intersections are given by something very simple. Wonderful, I think this is a great experience. Great. Um, I'm not sure what formulate the question. Suppose instead of trying to calculate the homology explicitly, if you look at the standard complex as an object in some derived category, and then you try to characterize that complex within the derived category. I Does this uh, give us anything different? Give me which derived category. And in standard complex is uh, uh, is is, is Okay. I I I I don't know. Category and modules is uh, something very
Okay, I think we can take the speaker, good? Okay?